Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm gonna to share with you a small payday prep that my wife and I just came back from shopping, uh, mainly at Costco, but we did stop at the coin shop, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and show you a little bit of the bling that we got uh, for this month's dollar cost average, which is what I like to call it. But first, before we start, I just wanted to remind you all how important it is that we continue to prepare. If you're not preparing, it is very important that you start prepping. If you are preparing, it is very important that you continue to prepare so that you can meet your goal, be it a month's worth of food, two months, a year, whatever it is. And if you're already at that point in your prepper journey where you're like, man, I am good to go. Anything can happen right now and I can stay in my house for six months. No problem. I have all the water, water filtration, all the food, all the medical, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that I need in order not to have to leave my house. Let's, let's go ahead and be realistic. Not to have to leave my house for like a month, meaning that something massive must have happened if you can't leave your house for a month or so. If you can say that, then you are very well prepared ladies and gentlemen and it's very important that if you are very well prepared and you can say that hey I can stay in my house for a really long time without having to journey on outward and face whatever problems there may be out there in society because so many people weren't prepped that you continue as I'm doing now to fill in the gaps don't get complacent and don't tell yourself man Nothing's really happened in the last 20 years, let's say. No super volcano has gone up. No World War III has happened, whatever. Don't get complacent and remember that it only takes one thing. It only takes one day for you to have to use your preps. And we all hope that we never have to use our preps, but that we use them because we're just rotating through them and filling in the gaps as appropriate. So make sure that you continue to be consistent. Make sure that if you are well prepared and that if you are filling in the gaps, that you spread the word, that you help your neighbors become prepared. And I know that some people will have a problem with my next statement, but if you are as prepared as you think you should be, then maybe prep a little bit more because it will allow you to help your brother, your sister, your neighbor. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So let me go ahead and show you a couple of things that we picked up just to fill in the gaps. But I wanted to show you, first and foremost, one of the cheapest ways that you can eat grass-fed beef with no, none of that antibiotic or any of that stuff in them. And you can actually eat good meat at a pretty good price. This here is the very best deal that I've found in that category. And that is the Costco grass-fed beef patties. These are grass-fed patties, 80% lean, 20% fat, which is a very good ratio. And it says here, no antibiotics or hormones added to their diet or injected into the animals. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is a five-pound bundle. Let me see. Yes, five pounds. And although it may sound a little pricey at $25 for five pounds, that's $5 a pound for grass-fed beef that has no hormones or antibiotics. That right there is pretty clean meat, if you want to call it that. So if you're exploring into doing carnivore or, or ketovore, or if you just want to get some decent beef that doesn't have all the junk that they're putting into them nowadays, go ahead and grab you some of these at Costco. Hopefully by me telling you this, the price won't go up. But this is the best deal that I've found for grass-fed beef. Well, if you all remember, I don't know, it was about a week ago or a week and a half ago or so that Nutrient Survival was having their 25% off sale, pretty much any bundle that you were able to make back there. No, they're not on sale anymore, but I'm just telling you so you can remember back then. Someone told me during a live stream that Mountain House was having a 50% off sale, any of their meat products in the number 10 cans. And they just happened to come out with this sausage, all right? This is like pork sausage. It's like the crumble sausage that you put on top of pizza. They just happened to come out with this. And I got these at 50% off, which is a great deal. Now, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am always championing Nutrient Survival because in my opinion, they're the very best freeze-dried food in the market period, just because of the nutrition that they have. And of course, because of the taste, in my opinion, they're the best, but they don't sell any meat. So when you're getting meat, what are you getting when you get meat? 
right? Be it freeze dried or be at home, you get the macros. That's it, pretty much. You get the macros. You get your your carbohydrates, which is almost none. You get your fat and you get your protein. And this has those really good numbers that I like to see as far as fat and protein. In my opinion, being that fat is a fuel and protein is something that allows you to take the amino acids, essential amino acids, and build back your muscle after working hard. I feel that in a grid down or in a crisis situation, maybe that'll last a long time, I feel that both the fat and protein are just as important. But the fat, ladies and gentlemen, allows you to have fuel that will sustain you for a long period of time when maybe you have to do a lot of hard work over and over and over again. And the protein, of course, is that that's going to repair your muscles after you've done that hard work. So just to let you know, this Mountain House sausage, because it is a new product, it has 21 grams of fat per serving, and it has 11 grams of protein. I think that is a great ratio for someone that's going to be on the go and being kept busy doing this and that during some kind of a crisis where they can't go to the supermarket and get themselves a nice cut of ribeye. So this sausage crumble, I ended up getting a six-pack of this. Great deal. So I want to say thank you very much. I think it was Mario123 that told me about that awesome deal that they were having. So thank you, Mario. Again, ladies and gentlemen, for protein that has a good fat in it and protein that your body actually needs, check these out. These are the wild sardines that Costco sells, and these are my favorite. They sell two different types, and I think they stopped selling the other one, the one that came like in a blue box. But they still sell these, and for good reason, because this is outstanding quality. And one of these, one of these cans has 17 milligrams of omega-3 which is something that is very important that we have. So I really like that. I like that they taste really good. But what I like most is that they're on sale. And having said that, let me go ahead and make a point. When you go shopping and you find something that's on sale that you weren't going to shop, that's why you keep a little bit of dry powder on the side. Dry powder is what I mean by when you have a few dollars of cash on the side uh, just in case something comes up that you weren't expecting. I didn't go to Costco to pick these up, but I definitely picked up a case of them seeing that they were like $4 and change off the normal price, which means that the case of six that I got is almost like I only had to pay for four of them and I got two of them for free. So great deal. And if you haven't tried these, give them a try. They don't taste fishy and they taste really, really good if you put a little bit of hot sauce on top of them. I've never come across olive oil that's American made. Usually all of the olive oil that I see when I go to a store is olive oil that comes from Italy or olive oil that comes from Portugal, etc., etc. But I've never seen American made olive oil. And check this out. At least this says American made. I hope you can see that. And while we're talking about American made, ladies and gentlemen, I understand that most of us don't really have a choice on where we do our shopping for just regular consumer items. Well, I'm here to tell you that we can make a difference in taking a chunk out of the big box store's profits by doing one simple thing, and that's buying as much American-made as we personally can. I hear it all the time, buy American. Well, for about the last 10 months or so, I've been buying my everyday consumer items from this company. Why? Because I really wanted to see what my experience was like before I told you about it. To make a long story short, Take a look at the link below and help to take a bite out of ESG, ladies and gentlemen. This is not for everyone, but I think that if enough of us do it, we can make a difference. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I know I'm going to hear it. I will make a small commission from this, all right? From anyone that makes a purchase, I will make a small commission. But that's not really what this is all about. It's about taking back what we've lost a long time ago. So take a look at the link in the description of the video and on a pin comment comment and it's going to say something like switch with AP. We're the ones that have to do it. No one else is going to. Right? And I, I really like the bottle. It's, an, uh, it's a uh, not stainless steel but an aluminum bottle and it's very nice. It comes with a little spout right here. But I've never come across this olive oil. If any of you have used this let me know how you like it. But this is extra virgin olive oil and it's cold pressed and Although maybe a year or two ago, I would have said, man, that's really expensive. It was like 15 bucks for a liter, right? Yes, for 33.8 full ounces. And if it's in a metal container like this and you keep it in a cool area, like I keep my oils 
on the floor of my pantry to make sure that they're in the coolest area of the pantry that they can be. And I keep light away from my oils. I've had olive oil that I've opened up two or three years past the best buy date and it was still good. So this olive oil being that it has a best buy date of like 2025, I have no problem thinking that this is going to last me at least till 2028, 2030. No problem at all. But more than likely, we'll use this up way before then. Why? Because rotation, ladies and gentlemen, rotation is the key to a successful prepper pantry. In my opinion, of course. And one of the most important things that you can get, and some people may think not, but I believe so, is seasoning. Ladies and gentlemen, have as much seasoning and as much variety as you possibly can. Seasoning, if you keep it in its original container, I've found lasts for years after the best buy date, for years. As long as the seal hasn't been broken and you keep it in the original container, it's going to last years. Now, if you go one step further and let's say, for example, dump this seasoning into a mason jar, like a quart jar, and dump 100 or 200 cc's worth of oxygen absorbers in there and then properly vacuum seal them, it'll last even longer. I just broke into some adobo that I had from 2018 in a mason jar that I do believe I did a video showing you all when I was packaging that. But it was from 2018, five years ago. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. And just think about how boring life would be without a variety of seasoning. And more importantly, you want to make sure that you have seasoning. Why? Because food fatigue is a real thing. And food fatigue attacks children more than it does grown adults. Why? Because we grown adults, we have the cognitive ability to say to ourselves, hey, if we don't eat, we're going to get sick, we're going to get weak, and eventually we're going to die. Children, if they don't want to eat, they just don't want to eat. Some children are picky eaters anyways. So you want to make sure that you have a good variety variety of spices and comfort foods to make sure that your kids will continue to eat. I'm not saying feed them junk food day after day after day after day. But man, I'll tell you what, a little bit of comfort food put to the side to bring out for special occasions during times where maybe you can't get that food anywhere else. That makes all the difference in the world and keeping your children from getting food fatigue, pretty much getting tired of eating the same thing every day. Now, let me go ahead and show you the last thing that we prepped with on this payday prep. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is real money. I always tell people who are still working, right, who are in the job force or the workforce, <laughs> the job force, I tell them, listen, when you get that paycheck at every two weeks or at the end of the month or whenever it is, when you get that paycheck, you have to make sure that you pay yourself first. And they're like, what do you mean pay myself first? Because what I tell them is that you never pay yourself first unless you're putting some real money away. You always pay the banker. You always pay your mortgage, your car payment, the lie bill, et cetera, et cetera, your credit cards. You're always taking money out of your pay to pay everyone you owe first so that you can live the standard of living that you live. But in my opinion, in, in addition to tithing, all right, you should all, and that's my opinion, right, ladies and gentlemen, as far as tithing goes, you should always pay yourself first by just putting a budget and following that budget and always being consistent with it and buying a few ounces of silver. And if you can afford it, by all means, gold every month on a consistent basis. I'm not a financial advisor. I have to say that because we are on the Internet, ladies and gentlemen. So do your own research. But I think that gold and silver is real money. Not though I think I know, but will retain your purchasing power for a very long time. Just do a little bit of research. So this time around, the budget wasn't very big. Whenever I go in there and I can only buy like maybe 10 ounces or less, I try to be picky with what I buy and I try to get the most for my buck. So first I go into the coin shop and I'm like, hey, Jerry, I heard that we were having a sale today over here that you were selling silver for one dollar above spot. Then after he's done laughing and making fun of me for even thinking that, I'm like, so what do you got? This time around, I got really lucky because he had some older silver eagles that have a few dings, you know, a few dings on them that he was selling for the same price as bullion. Now, bullion, I actually didn't get any bullion today. Everything I got today was sovereign. So I was able to buy these silver eagles. And look at that. They're pretty nice. I was able to buy these for about $2.50 over spot. And that is a great deal. So this one here just happens to be a 2013, right? A 2013. And then I got a couple of these really nice 2015. I think these are called Britannicas. Let me see. Yes, Britannias. Britannias. I always call them Britannicas. 
I got a couple of these 2015 Britannicas or Britannias. I got three of these. All right. I got a, I got one of these kangaroos, Australian kangaroos. I hope that you can see these. And that's it. So I ended up getting a total of six silver eagles right here. And, uh, and then those other three Britannias and one kangaroo. And this is another one of the silver eagle. I just like the ones that have a little bit of that patina on them. You see that? So anyways, ladies and gentlemen, just telling you that I would love nothing more than to go to the coin shop and say, hey, let me get 100 ounces of silver. But I can't do that. But 10 ounces, that's good, right? Putting away 10 ounces. And even if all I could do was go in there and get 5 ounces of silver this month, all right, because my budget only said I can only get 5 ounces, that is a lot better than only getting 1 or none, all right? So don't be discouraged when you can't go in there and buy 20 ounces or 100 ounces. If all you can buy is one or two, still go in there and be consistent. Plus, man, silver and gold took a beating this week. I was so excited. I only wish that I could buy some gold, but silver it is, at least for this time around. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So listen, having said that, I just want to say thank you very much for joining in. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out.